Hi. This video is about pseudo alignment and expectation maximization. Um, so this is an important algorithm that is used in RNA-seq transcript abundance quantification. Um, so I'll briefly introduce the problem. So when we do alignment, most of the reads that we have in the fastq files do not align uniquely to the reference uh, genome. So this is mainly due to the fact that transcripts often from the same gene share a lot of common features because they use the same exons. So in this uh, plot that we have here, we can actually see a gene with all its exons in black. And we have two transcripts that share similar exons, but some exons are left out in one or the other. So if we have reads um, in, let's say, purple, and they align to exon 1, then we don't know from which transcript this came from. So this is an ambiguous read. So we can't directly associate a count to a transcript. The green reads that we have here are uniquely aligned to transcript 1. And we know this because exon 2 only occurs in transcript 1. So we can dismiss the idea that it comes from transcript 2. So this is uh, mainly due to the fact that uh, we have this splicing junction and that helps us to be certain of the origin. In practice, only 30% of the reads usually align uniquely to, the, to a transcript. And the other 70%, we have to kind of disambiguate and uh, associate the counts accordingly. So how do we do this, right? So the naive way um, of doing this would be to just run um, this. So the naive way of doing this is to just, uh, if we have a read and it aligns to, let's say, three transcripts, uh, we just evenly cut the count into thirds, and then each transcript gets a third of a count. So this is uh, really simple, and we just use this example to go through some code so you kind of get familiarized with the idea. So here we have four reads, and uh, so we have a list, and then in the list we have uh, lists of integers, and the integers, they represent our transcripts. So here we have transcripts from zero to five, so there's six transcripts in total. And then uh, each uh, list in here is a read that was aligned. So the first read aligned to transcript 0 and transcript 1. And uh, this one here, for example, aligned to three transcripts. So this aligned to transcript 3, 4, and 5. So what we want to do is we want to initialize our count vector. So this is our final output. And uh, we start it with 0. Right? So it's a vector of length 6, and all the entries are 0. So now we want to loop over the aligned reads. And uh, then once we're in here, we loop through the elements of the reads from which they were aligned. And then we add the counts accordingly to the length of the vector. So let's say if we iterate uh, through here, we know the length is 3. So we have to divide the count by 3 and then add that to the corresponding transcript. So in this case, it would be a third every time uh, for every element here would get a third of a count. So that's a really simple example. If we run this, uh, what we see is that this is the final count distribution. So transcript 1, uh, 0 got one count. Transcript 2 got half a count. Transcript uh, this one, like the 2, uh, got no counts. Where we can see it's not actually in here, so it shouldn't get any counts. And then the other three got 0 0.83 counts. And if we sum up all the counts, they should come back to the total, which is four. So this is what we had. We had four reads. So that's what we expect. So this is a really simplified uh, way to do it. And there's a better way. And it just evolves around how do we split up a count if it aligns to multiple transcripts. So this is this expectation maximization step. So uh, what we can see in the figure is instead of splitting a count um, proportional to you know, the number of transcripts in, in the alignment, 
we want to weigh it based on our expected on the expected counts that the transcript has so uh, imagine uh, we already have some knowledge about how much a transcript is um, is found in our reads so they have different weights so i just showed this at the as the size of these of these of this bar chart so transcript 2 has the highest abundance and uh, transcript 3 would have the lowest abundance so if we find a read just marked as this one we would um, give appropriate amounts of that read to the transcript proportional to the counts that they already have so how does this now work because we don't have these numbers at the beginning right so what we can do is again we have our aligned reads as before so what we do is we can initialize our initial count uh, with like some uh, preset count so at the beginning we'll just assume a uniform distribution uh, for all the transcripts because we don't know what it actually is so here we just initialize the vector with one so now we have also temporary counts which we will change i'll explain what that happens and uh, intermediate counts so what we want to do is we want to have an algorithm that is iterative so we'll do a couple of rounds of this and eventually the solution will converge to a solution so uh, we start with our temporary counts so this is like a placeholder so now uh, we loop through our reads okay so what we now want to know is how many uh, reads uh, do we already have assigned um, to these transcripts so this is the this is something we'll use to normalize the scores later so for this example here what we would want to know is how many counts uh, do these transcripts have in total at this current state because we initialized with one there is two reads one for transcript zero one for transcript one so this is this uh, sum counts so now we iterate again over our reads and so now we want to build these temporary counts where we split the counts relative to the transcript abundance so what we can see here is our counts which we initialize with one right now divided by the total counts because we initialize the first step with one they're all uniform so they get split evenly in the first round so now what we get is this temporary count and then uh, once we loop through all the reads we update the counts with our temporary counts and uh, i just saved the intermediate counts for later analysis so you can uh, dismiss this and then we keep doing this so we keep iterating over this and so the the thing works because sometimes you will have unique alignments right so let's say there is a read where transcript zero is the only uh, transcript where the read aligned so this will skew the count distribution to its favor so the algorithm over time will weigh this transcript more than other transcripts so what actually happens so if we run this uh, a couple of times and this is by no means an optimal way to implement this right so there's better ways to do this but this just illustrates uh, the idea so uh, we ran it we can see we still have four counts in total so we didn't do something weird and now we can actually look at what happens to the estimates of the transcripts over the iterations uh, that we ran. So here, if I just plot the estimated count for transcript zero, we can see that over the number of iterations, we started at one, how we initialized the, uh, the count vector. And then we slowly went up and then eventually the expectation maximization algorithm decided that transcript zero had two counts uh, so if we look here um, you know it's kind of interesting because transcript zero is in two alignments but it seemed to have gotten all the credit for it so transcript one didn't get any of the counts in this case 
and transcript 3 seem to have not gotten any in this case. So it's kind of interesting what this algorithm does. You can change this number if you want to test it out. You can look at uh, other transcripts. So for example, transcript 1, we see that you know it started at uh, like 1, but then it like drops down quickly, and it basically gets 0 counts. OK. So now we can change maybe the reads sli slightly. Uh, like as uh, shown before, we had uh, transcript 3, for example, also has zero counts. So the algorithm slowly took away the counts from transcript 3. So what is what happens if we add a read that is unique for 3? That will change the result of the alignment significantly. So here we have exactly the same algorithm, right? We uh, set everything back to 1, iterate over it 100 times, uh, get our normalization count that we use, you know, to come back to the correct number of reads in the end. And so we'll run it. Okay. So now if we look at transcript 3 again, we can see the before and after, right? So the blue was what we had before. Uh, this was the case when we didn't have any unique reads for transcript 3. And we can see that the algorithm decided that transcript 3 has no counts. Uh, just adding one um, unique read to transcript 3 gave the algorithm a lot of confidence to give uh, transcript 3 more than two counts. Okay, so now uh, this algorithm is nice because it allows us also to deal with uh, weird things of normalization. So you can imagine that, for example, you would want to control for the length of the transcript. So this is a common thing that's done in Callisto, for example. Uh, Callisto wants to weigh transcripts that are long down. And short transcripts actually have a higher probability of getting counts associated to them. I don't exactly know what the logic is, but if you look at the code, that's what they do. So in this example, it's actually the inverse. So here, a long transcript is weighed higher, and it should get more reads that way. OK, so if we, uh, and I think this is kind of logical, but uh, maybe you know why this is, and you can maybe comment it if you know. It would be interesting for me, too. So uh, what we can do here is if we have transcript lengths, we can use them in our normalization and uh, get different counts that way. So how this works is we have to also add them into uh, our normalization so that in the end we can get the correct number of uh, counts. So we want four in the end. So we we integrate this into as a, as the count number. And uh, similarly here, we just multiply the transcript length with the counts that we have. So a long transcript with a lot of counts will get more of a proportion of a read than a shorter transcript with fewer counts. And again, we just normalize so we get this. So if I run this, uh, again, we're doing OK. So we have four reads. That's you know what we expected. So we had four reads as input. And then the total number of counts is four. So this is accurate. And uh, so this is the dynamics uh, that we get here. So you can see that uh, the normalization of the transcript length can make a big difference. So before uh, we normalized uh, before we normalized by length, we just used expectation maximization based on the counts. The algorithm uh, gave transcript zero two counts. Uh, but if we normalize for the length, in this case, transcript zero now had zero counts. And uh, why is this? Well, because here transcript zero, we gave it the length of 100. And in our normalization, we preferred long transcripts. So other transcripts are longer. So they ended up taking the counts away from transcript zero. 
Okay. So we can also show this uh, in a bar plot here. So here we have all the transcripts. So transcript 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And uh, this is the counts it got in blue just with the expectation maximization on the counts. And here in orange, we have the expectation maximization plus the length of the transcript. And so you can see that transcript 0 loses all its counts. Uh, transcript 1 all of a sudden goes from 0 to 1 count. Transcript 3 really benefited from this normalization. Uh, and it went from like close to 0 to uh, you know, 1.75. And uh, so if we look at transcript 3, um, yeah, we can see it's a pretty long uh, transcript. right? So we have... Um, yeah, transcript three, just making sure. Where is it? Sorry. Yeah, so we have uh, a length of 300, so it got weighed to a higher priority. So now uh, you basically have the idea. So this is the basics of the algorithm, and you can make that as complicated as you want. So the transcript length is just one example of how you can add normalizations to that algorithm. And so you can just keep adding normalization scores uh, for your transcripts. So another popular one that's used by Salmon is correcting for um, CG content. So um, they say that genes that have a lot of uh, CG content um, will be more frequently found uh, in the reads, so they should have a higher probability. Um, so to get those values, you would have to have some model uh, that models the probability change. Uh, so I just made up some numbers, um, but you get the idea. It's similar to the transcript length. Some transcripts will become more likely than others. Uh, so here I just did it like this, where I gave values of like 1.2, 1.8, 1.4, so you would assume that transcript uh, 3, uh, again, would be more likely because it has a larger value here than others. And uh, we also have the transcript length, so you can just see that we just keep multiplying these values on. And that's it. And so you can you know, come up with your own models and like add those, but this is the basic idea of the algorithm. Um, so we can run this, and then we can run the bar plot, so we can just see what happens. So here, um, if we just compare the EM with length correction versus the EM plus length plus the CG, the GC content, uh, these are the differences, right? So the biggest differences are really between transcript 0 and 1. And uh, so this is just a toy example with very few transcripts. Uh, if you have more reads, I expect this to be a little bit more stable and like less variable on like small changes uh, that we observed. But again, the algorithm could be pretty sensitive to these like small changes uh, as we have seen. So yeah, I hope this helped. This was just supposed to be a really quick uh, video to explain the logic of the expectation maximization algorithm that's used in algorithms like Callisto and Salmon, and why it's important. So that's it. Uh, thanks for listening. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll try to answer them. Bye.